Shalom Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, here live in Israel, here at just in behind me, the Kotel and the Temple Mount, as you can see in the background on your screen there. I just wanted to bring you up to date on some news that is going on today uh, and tomorrow. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in Moscow uh, speaking with uh, President Vladimir Putin over the situation in the Middle East with Syria as well as with those uh, issues with uh, the West Bank. And he's also speaking with Prime Minister Netanyahu about how to bring about a two-state solution. It's kind of interesting to see that, uh, the, uh, that the President Putin is really getting more and more involved with those things that are going on in the Middle East. And of course, he does have tremendous stakes here in the Middle East. As we know, back in January of 2014, he signed an agreement with Mahmoud Abbas uh, over the oil and natural gas drilling rights, both in the, uh, the West Bank as well as in Gaza. So he does have very much interest in this particular area, as well as he does in Syria, one of the reasons why he's back in Bashar al-Assad. Now, one thing I will say, though, that I think that uh, the prime, excuse me, the president of Russia is doing very well on, and that is fighting ISIS, something that the United States doesn't seem to be. Uh, too much interested interested in fighting them. In fact, if anything, now the U.S. is being uh, accused by RT News of actually abetting and uh, 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 or at least sponsoring Al Qaeda and leaning more towards their side now. Uh, no wonder why they keep asking Russia, "Don't bomb this group, don't bomb that group," and all the groups that they don't want Russia to get involved with are all those groups that are trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. And that's kind of odd, seeing seeing that how Bashar al-Assad is the only guy in the Middle East that actually cares uh, about the Christian community that is in that group there as well. So it's interesting how that this is all playing out. Uh, anyhow, we know that the Prime Minister of Netanyahu of Israel is there in Moscow meeting with uh, President uh, Putin. We'll just have to wait and see how that comes out. And other news going on in the Middle East as well. We know that in both in uh, Iraq and Turkey, there's been a lot of unrest, a lot of violence, a lot of death has been going on. Uh, today, another 11 people killed in a uh, car bomb there in Istanbul. Uh, just yesterday, uh, 17 women burned alive there in Iraq uh, by ISIS members. You know, it reminds me, and I know many of you guys have actually shared this with us in letters before, but I even have the very book that was written by Albert Pike, the, uh, the Freemason uh, that actually wrote the book there. But he stated that this is exactly what was the ambition that they were looking to do, and that was to bring about a war where the Muslim people would actually destroy one another and that they would even turn on the Jewish people to try to annihilate the Jews. This was a plan of theirs, not to mention the building of the Third Temple. They want to be involved in it. They're not interested in the Jewish people having the control over it. They want to be involved. When I say they, that's the Freemasons, the, uh, the, the Jesuits of the Catholic Church. They're the ones that want control of that. Now, Let's go into further news here. Let me take you to uh, Yana Benu, my wife. She has a very interesting report we want to share with you now. Good evening. You are watching Israeli News Live, and I am reporting live from the Kotel, the most holiest site for Jewish people in Jerusalem, Israel. We have a very disturbing thing happen here today. The president of the group Women of the Wall was detained at a Kotel at the woman's site uh, and taken out from the hotel by police for bringing the Torah to the wall. According to Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, women are not allowed to carry Torah and they are not allowed to read from the Torah. However, this uh, group called Women of the Wall are petitioning the government and they are trying to fight for their religious rights to bring the Torah to Kotel and be able to worship their God the same way as men do on their side of the uh, veiling wall. Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to fight for them, but he was unable to bring any results so far due to the mm, pressure from uh, Orthodox rabbis. In fact, the chief rabbi of the Kotel, Rabbi Rabinovich, has declared that women have desecrated the holy site today and he is planning on fasting to atone for this desecration of the site.
This is indeed a very sad news because we know that when God gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, he had men, women and children, the entire congregation there and he was giving them the law and he wasn't giving it just to males, he was giving it to all of the people of Israel. I'm reporting to you live from Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, the report that uh, Yana just shared with you, I'd like to just kind of add something to that because it was very disturbing for me to hear this as well. We, we've heard over and over and over how that different women have been arrested at the Kotel for their right to be able to take the Torah, the Word of God, and be able to read it at this location, uh, a holy site, the, one of the holiest sites for the Jewish people. And being Jewish myself, I do understand that. I understand the way they feel about the wall. And, uh, but when I begin to look at what's going on here, I have to ask myself, as well as my rabbinical brethren, are we not taking into consideration what's really going on? What's at stake here? Because when we look at the Torah, when we look at Genesis, a lot of times they use the, the idea that the reason why uh, this should not be, women should not be permitted to read the Torah is because Eve added to the word when she said, God has said, uh, and she's replying in defense for herself, or when she's actually speaking to Satan, when Satan is trying to get her to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the rabbis go to say that she added to the word, but we know that this is not true. She did not add to the word. Had she added to the word, then God himself would have corrected her for that as well as the mistake of eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God does give her credit uh, in, you know, when she states that, you know, the serpent beguiled me, he deceived me, in other words. Adam, though, the blame was placed on him because he willingly, knowingly did what he did and was in the error there, uh, but not Eve. And another thing that is also brought, on, uh, brought against her is they say that she is a helpmate, belittling the fact that she is Ezra, or Ezra Kanegido, as it says in the Hebrew language. But Ezra, meaning a helper, actually the uh, Kanegido is more of a, uh, a neutrality or uh, someone that helps to, to bring uh, uh, an equality or, or, to, or another way it's translated by some of the rabbis is against him. In other words, to help bring about a neutral agreement there. But the serious thing is, though, is when they belittle her because they say she is Ezra, a helper. Do you realize that it is spoken only a couple of times about a woman being Ezra, but when it comes to God himself, the Almighty, the Hashem, he has spoken of, of Ezra, I think it's like 50-something times in the Tanakh. Do we belittle him because he is Ezra? Never, and never would we. So then why do we belittle women? And also remember, my rabbinical brethren, we have to look at Hulda, the prophetess. Remember, when Israel did not know what to do, the high priest had to consult Hulda, the prophetess, to find out what the mind of God was. And remember, it is the prophets that actually wrote the Word of God. Moses was a prophet. Moshe, a, he was a Navi, a prophet indeed. So Hulda, her word was taken as the Word of God. I'm Stephen Benun reporting to you live from Jerusalem. Shalom.